All right, hello everyone. We're on to the second lesson of chapter 10, where we're going to talk about adding and subtracting rational numbers. Now, the interesting thing about this lesson is it is essentially things that we have done before, but it's combining them all together into one lesson. So we're going to review adding and subtracting integers, adding and subtracting decimals, and then adding and subtracting fractions. So that's how we've decided to split our lesson for today. So let's take a look here. We have negative 20 plus 7. So when you're adding integers, so we have negative 20 plus 7, what you can do is you can think back to our integer unit where we talked about the absolute value of two numbers. So we can talk about the absolute value of negative 20, which is 20. Then what we can do is we can find the difference between our two numbers' absolute values. The difference in this case is 13. So the difference between 20 and 7 is 13 using the absolute value of 20. But then we look at which number originally, which one has the greatest value and what was it originally? So 20 has the greatest absolute value and originally it was negative. So my answer is still negative 13. If you think about it, that makes sense. If I start with negative 20, I've lost $20 and I find seven back. I still have lost $13 overall. So that's when you have a negative and a positive together. You find the difference. It's a little bit different if you have two negative numbers. It's actually quite simple. Think of it this way. I lost $70. I lost $20. How much did I lose altogether? Well, I lost $90. So I'm at negative 90. Okay. All right. Subtracting integers gets a little bit more fancy. So here we have 41 subtract negative 10. When you subtract integers, you can add the opposite. So I do leave, leave the first number the same, switch to addition, and then I switch negative 10 to positive 10. So I end up with 41 plus 10. Very straightforward. My answer is 51. Again, it's sort of like a double negative. Subtracting a negative number is the same as adding a positive number. Now I have negative 20 and I take away 5. Again, same thing. Leave the first number, negative 20, plus I switched it over here, and then I switch 5 to a negative 5. Remember, be careful. We always made this mistake in our integer unit. This is subtract positive 5. It's not already negative. I switch my subtraction sign, and then I switch my positive 5 to being negative 5. So now I end up with actually pretty handy. They're both negative. Negative 20 plus negative 5 gives me negative 25. Okay. Let's do it one more time. Negative 10. Leave. Switch. Switch. Again here I have a negative number and a positive. So I can think what's the difference between those two numbers. If I think about their absolute value. The difference is 20. Which one had the greater absolute value? It was 30. 30 was positive, so my answer is going to be a positive number. That's a quick review on integers. Don't worry, we'll keep using integers when we review how to work with decimals. So here we have 4.2 plus negative 6.8. So don't be freaked out just because we're including decimals and integers. We're just going to combine what we just reviewed. So again, I can find the difference between these two numbers because one's positive and one's negative. So let's find the difference. Make sure you line up your decimal places. That's the most important thing. So I'm finding difference. Difference means to subtract and I end up with 2.6. But then I go back and I think which one had the greater absolute value? Well, it was 6.8, which was a negative number. So I end up with negative 2.6. Then we can go down here. Now we have a three-step question. However, I follow bed mass. So bed mass says I do brackets first. These are just my brackets around my negative numbers. There's nothing to do inside of there. It's just to show you this is a negative number. So I'm just going to do what I see first because it's all addition right now. So I go in the order that I see. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out, well, what is 7.1 plus negative 3.4? Again, don't be afraid to go to the side. I'll see if I can squeeze it in here. I'm going to do some subtraction. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I end up with 3, oops, 3.7. Is it positive is it or negative? Well, my positive number over here had the bigger absolute value, so I have 3.7. Plus, oop, let me switch to, let me get rid of that, switch to my pen. Plus negative 5.2. I can do the same thing where I do 5.2, find the difference, even though it's subtraction, find the difference between these two numbers, okay? And I end up with 1.5. Is it positive or is it negative? It's negative because my negative number had the bigger absolute value, so don't forget to slide it in there. All right, subtracting decimals. Here we go, we have 8.2 take away 9.7. If I want, what I can do, because it's subtraction, is I can actually do 8.2 plus, leave switch switch, negative 9.7. So I still end up finding the difference between those two numbers. What's the difference between 9.7 and 8.2? The difference is 1.5. But I know from over here which number had the greater absolute value. It was a negative number, so my answer is negative. You could also figure out that it's negative by just thinking about it logically. If I have $8 and I somehow lose 9, I've lost more than what I have. It's going to be a negative representation. All right, negative 10.5, subtract negative 20.1. So let's do leave switch switch again. Write out what you have, switch, and then switch. So again, I'm adding a negative and a positive so I can find the difference between those two numbers oopsies I noticed that I made a mistake over here sorry about that this should be a 0.1 not 0.5 so when I find the difference between those two numbers I'm sure you can do it a lot neater in your textbook I do some subtraction borrow borrow move over 11 take away 5 is 6 9 and I get 9.6. Is it positive or is it negative? Well, my positive number had the greater absolute value, so it's going to be a positive answer. All right, last section is talking about fractions. So again, we've included negative numbers here in our fractions. I probably should have put a bracket in here so you can see more clearly that it's a negative number. A couple different steps need to happen. I suggest that the first thing you do when you're working with fractions is put them all so that they have the same denominator. So if I look at this, I can quickly see I have 4, 8, and 16. Well, that will all easily nicely fit into sixteenths. So I'm going to convert my 1 fourth into sixteenths. I think, how did I go from 4 to 16? I multiplied by 4, which you do to the bottom, you must do to the top. So I have 4 sixteenths plus negative, let's see, also 4 sixteenths, some brackets around there, plus 1 sixteenth. Now, because we're following bed mass, I do what's in the brackets first. So negative 4 sixteenths plus 1 sixteenth, I could do some good old subtraction. So I could subtract 4, take away 1, and I would end up with 3 sixteenths because I can think about the absolute value, the difference between those, and it's going to be negative, okay? So you can think, I've lost 4 sixteenths, I gained one back, so I'm at negative 3 sixteenths. Then don't forget about the first part of our question, 4 sixteenths plus. Now notice, it's not 4 sixteenths subtract right now, it's 4 plus negative 3 sixteenths. Same thing that I can do with integers. I can think, okay, 4 plus 3. I'm doing 4 plus negative 3. I can find the difference between those numbers. The difference is 1 sixteenth. Is it positive or negative? It's positive because my positive number had the greater absolute value. All right, let's do one more example like that. Subtracting fractions. Again, sorry, grade 7. It's a little bit messy working on my tablet, but I think that we can get through it. So let's start. Same thing. Hmm. I think 4, 5, and 20. I'm going to make them all have the same bottom number just to get myself started. I'm going to put them all out of 20 because that seems like the obvious denominator to me. 
So I get 25 twentieths take away. All right, now I had a mixed number, it was negative. So first, what I can do is I'm gonna go one times five, I'm working right over here. One times five is five, five plus one more is six. And so I have six fifths. To get from fifths to 20th, I multiply by four. So I actually end up with 24 twentieths, negative 24 twentieths, plus negative 12 twentieths. That's all within one big bracket. So negative 24 twentieths plus negative 12 twentieths actually ends up, because I'm doing what's in the bracket first, I end up with negative 36 twentieths, okay? Again, don't forget to write out what's left. This has not been dealt with yet. So then I do 25 twentieths, take away negative 36 twentieths. When I'm subtracting with integers, I can leave, switch, switch. So I'm gonna leave this first part I'm just going to do it here because I'm running out of room. Switch to addition. And then my negative 36 twentieths is actually going to become positive. So 25 plus 36, I should be able to do that in my head. I get 61 twentieths, which I can simplify. Again, you may do this on the side, but I have 3 and 1 whole twentieths. Okay, so this lesson is combining a lot of different things we have learned. So take it step by step, work very carefully, because as soon as you make one tiny mistake, it could become very difficult. If you're ending up with crazy weird numbers and decimals, go back to the beginning and start again, because it probably means that you made a mistake. So work very carefully, don't forget about bed mass, and be careful when you're working with integers. Feel free to